Welcome to the car guys and welcome to our favourite 10 Aston Martins. Yes that's right we asked you which cars you would most like to see us go through and pick out our 10 favourites and Aston Martin came out on top so naturally we did Ford first. You voted for this on Instagram so we thought we had to do it we had to pull out the best Aston Martins that have ever been built and maybe we'll tell you why no Aston Martin has currently made it to the car guys garage. Aston Martin is to me beauty and brutality. It is the epitome of the clenched fist in a velvet glove. Being British, it's safe to say that Aston Martin has a dear place in our heart. So we're going to attempt to do the best list that we possibly can. But we have to accept that no matter how good our list will be, there will always be thousands of you who disagree and we're fully prepared for the flack that we're going to get. Well Aston Martin is one of those great British products. I remember going to the factory when I was very young uh, for a tour and seeing all these old guys in these brown coats hand crafting panels on cars and it was just wonderful. It was a magical magical place. Whilst there are many gorgeous models as you can see from our list there are very few that I would actually want to own and live with. Hence why there's no Aston Martin currently in the car guy's garage. But we have to confess that the modern era so far has left us a little cold. So let's crack on then with our favourite 10 Aston Martins. And number one for me is the V12 Vantage S. Yes, that's right. Aston Martin took the most diminutive of their cars, the absolutely pretty V8 Vantage and in a drunken board meeting they decided to shoehorn a 6 litre V12 into its tiny frame. It made it into a snarling, growling, beautiful, incredible monster and I have to say it's one of my favourites. I can't disagree with you. I don't even know how they got that engine in there. The engine bay doesn't look big enough to fit that V12 in. And the only difference between that and the standard V8 is that you've got a few extra vents on the bonnet. It's a crazy car. It's a crazy, crazy car. If anything, the bonnets for me are probably the worst part because although if you have them body colour, they look quite subtle and therefore you don't notice them that much. But then when you have them in that carbon fibre, they sort of stand out too much. So they look a little bit as Prince Charles would have said a monstrous carbuncle <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, as, as a joke so? there for, uh, for, any, for anyone that's aged 40 and over <laughs> old man joke and later ones had a dog leg gearbox so they think they are the most collectible variant of it I had one in the 2000s a V8 Vantage what that lacked perhaps was a bit of grunt and boy did they rectify that with a <laughs> flipping great V12 engine. Yeah, I think this is the most desirable modern era Aston Martin certainly that I can think of and, and probably would have a very good shot at getting into the car guy's garage. My first choice, so let me give you some background. Aston Martin are, uh, have a coach builder which they work with very closely and have done since the very early days and their name is Zagato and they produce some of the most beautiful Aston Martins around. They also sometimes miss Q stuff. And this, <laughs> and this, I have to be honest, is probably one of those times. Oh, that's harsh. From a certain aspect, oh, right? Oh, come on. Yeah, I know, I know the aspect you're going to talk Do you about. Know what I'm it's the rear. About. It's the rear of it. <laughs> well, well, and maybe the grill. It looks so like a Ford Mondeo has shagged a Reliant <laughs> Robin from the back. This is the DB7 Zagato, right? Now, so a DB7 is a very, very pretty car. It's a very subtle shape. It's got lovely curves. It's a stunning looking car. But Zagato came along and went, we can do better than that, chaps. And they went, all right, then off you go. And they came back and went, da da And then everybody instantly threw up in their mouths. <laughs> uh, but by that time the project was so far down the road that they had to produce it and I'm being particularly cruel but the, the roundness of it is nice but the front grille is way too big it looks like one of those rap stars that's got those diamond 
uh, <laughs> braces on. And, and and as you say, the rear, I, I think they just left that to the cleaner to, to draw. I've got a soft spot, I have to say, for this. I think it is because it, it because it's so odd looking. So I completely I completely agree with that sort of basking shark bottom feedery grill. I think it is bigger than it needs to be, but it does look therefore very distinctive and iconic that I actually do quite like it. They only made 99 of these things, so it's very rare. And, and I quite like the fact also that the whole concept was conceived by by the boss of Aston Martin and Andrea Zagato basically getting drunk at a dinner table and then this is the result. I sort of like that. Yeah, I love that. that, that those stories are what makes car, uh, make cars interesting for me. Everyone take a deep breath. Let's go for number three. What's number three on our list? Number three is, uh, this is one of the cars that could easily make it into the car guy's garage out of all of the Aston Martins. It's a Bond car and it's modern era. So we're talking Daniel Craig, we're talking Casino Royale, we're talking Quantum of Solace. So it is that DBS and particularly the one they do in with a manual gearbox. So it's one of the few Aston Martins really that has a manual gearbox in the modern era. And it just so happens to also be very beautiful. It packs a solid punch with a 5.9 litre V12, giving you just over 500 brake horsepower. It's the whole package to me. This car is stunning. It really is. It's a very, very good looking car. You can't help but be impressed by the styling of this. This is where, you know, Aston came out with the DB9. And from that point onwards, they're all very good looking distinctive cars but the dbs particularly is just just something wonderful now we're going to go to probably one of the nicest zagatos that they've done this is the db4 gt zagato boom oh my yeah goodness this makes me very fizzy this <laughs> is a very very good looking car i don't think i'd ever i don't think i'd care to drive it you know those people that have garages in their lounge so they can see the car this is a piece of art that's how i see this car it's an absolute stunner yeah i would never actually drive it obviously that would be insane to do that i mean they only, they only made 19 of them for god's sake so it'd be, it would be priceless considering it was made in the early 60s 314 brake horsepower top speed of 160 allegedly I think without doubt probably well one of the prettiest Aston Martins ever made and it's got to be on the list doesn't it really got to be on the list got to be okay so let's go halfway through car number five is a brutish thing something that epitomizes I think Aston Martin V8 Vantage V600 version so this is the pumped up works prepped version of the V8 Vantage which at the time was the successor to the Virage so it's that sort of quite nice, long, big, swoopy GT body, big bonnet, swoopy back end. And this is like the super hot chili pepper version of that. It ran between 1992 and 1999. 550 brake horsepower in the standard car, but of course the V600 was 600 brake horsepower. And to cope with that, they obviously needed to flex the body in every direction possible. <laughs> Wow, can you imagine 600 horsepower? You know, that's, 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 a lot, that's a lot of power for a car that was in the beginning of the 90s. You know, we were, uh, don't forget, at the beginning of the 90s, we were getting quite excited about Subarus with 220 brake horsepower. Uh, but the only downside is, of course, this 600 brake horsepower is shifting a body not unlike a cathedral. <laughs> yes. But you still got a true 200 mile an hour top speed. And I have to say, I go a little bit wibbly wobbly weak at the knees when I see them because they have such presence when you stand next to them they're so wide they're so sort of like aggressive and low i just have loved them there was a le mans edition i think came at the end of their life as well so again you know just a little bit extra special but i have a real soft spot and to me when i think aston martin this is one of the ones that comes to mind yeah i'm totally agree with you this is a, a proper proper monster car your next choice then and i believe it might be quite a biggie it is, this is quite a big one. This is the DBR1. Oh, wow. So this is the 
to for anybody that doesn't know david brown purchased the aston martin company way back when and one of the first cars they produced was dbr1 it's just breathtaking 1957 this car was produced it had a two and a half liter aluminium straight six engine they made five <laughs> right that's how rare this car is they only made five of them and it was built for racing so you've got to remember this is a pure aston martin race car it is competing at the very pinnacle of motorsport at the time so this car won le mans in 1959 it's got proper race pedigree this car it was up against the ferrari 250 testarossas and actually they do look quite similar in terms of the overall body shape both of them open cars both of them long bonnet both of them lots of swoopy shapes this was the real battle between you know ferrari and aston martin and it's just that era of heroic but ridiculously dangerous motorsport and they were right at the pinnacle and it's really what helped cement Aston Martin's reputation as a serious racing company and car maker, yeah. One sold in 2017 for 22 and a half million, I think, something like that. That's because yeah. of how rare they are. And that, one, that one wasn't even the most famous one. That was that was kind of the second famous, famous <laughs> version. That wasn't the one that won Le Mans. Well, give me something weird. Okay, you want weird? No problem, my friend. Here it comes. We're going right bang up to date and we are going with another Zagato vehicle. So a partnership oh, with Aston Martin. This could go two ways. So announced in 2017, kind of sold in 2018. Zagato did a big move with Aston Martin and they made a, a coupe, a convertible, a speedster type vehicle and also a shooting brake. So they did Zagato versions of all of those based, I think, on the Vanquish S and you essentially had this limited edition collection of cars, 99 coupe, 99 convertible, 99 shooting brakes and 28 speedsters. A friend of this channel owns all of these cars quite famously. So um, I've actually stood next to these cars, but the one I'm gonna pick out for this list is actually the quirkiest of them all. And that's the Zagato shooting brake. Now, this is a car that probably should never have been made. It should never have got off the drawing board because let's face it, who wants an Aston Martin that sort of looks like an estate car? No one. But, but no, one's exactly. putting, no one's putting a dog in the back no of that one. and going no off to the countryside, never. But I saw one of these things in the flesh for the first time. And you know, when I heard about it, I was like, this is gonna be horrendous. But when I saw it in the flesh, it is, it just works. It's an amazing looking car. It's just got lines that you would not expect. It's a true two-seater, so you don't actually get any benefit oh, from really? that sort of extended <laughs> body. Yeah, there's no, there's no extra room in it whatsoever. It's but just it's, literally there for design purposes and nothing else. Yeah, yeah, it is a nice. complete two fingers to the practical brigade. I just think it looks phenomenal and it just has no right to look phenomenal but but it does and i just think it's a real fantastic celebration of what zagato can do when they when they when he's on his game and the fact that obviously someone who watches this channel has also got one i think is also a little bit special so it has to go on the list what do you think yeah i i, I have to agree with you it, it is a little bit weird looking it's a little bit jarring there's more time you spend looking at all the different angles of it it kind of grows on you a little bit and, and the fact that they produce four different versions of the same car as a design exercise is I think that's fabulous. You know, there's one for everybody inside that. I mean, my personal favorite is the coupe. I love that. I think they're absolutely stunning. But I can see where you're going with the shooting brake. And it's massively impractical. Who has a two-seater shooting brake, for God's sake? <laughs> <laughs> fabulous. I mean, obviously, no one's going to agree with our list entirely. There are going to be, it's a very personal list that we're producing here. But they are the Aston Martins that mean the most, that speak to us the most. One thing you can say about Aston Martin is that they certainly know about design and they know how to create conversation around their design. You can never say out of all of the cars that they've made that there's anything in there that's particularly plain and a bit boring looking. Maybe the DB11. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get it in there. <laughs> yeah, the DB11. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one. My next car 
is the 177. Now, here's another car with, I don't know what, I think I had, must have had this fascination with, with big grills recently. Uh, <laughs> here's another car that looks like it would swallow you and small children as it drives down the road. What a monster of a vehicle. I've seen a couple of these things on the road. They are just jaw-dropping when they come past. To see one of these things in flight is just incredible. Again, it's got these, it looks a little bit like the rear end has been, you know, it's like someone's got a bicycle pump and pumped up the rear wheel arches and, and they've kind of bulged out a little bit and then we slapped a big grill on the front. It's just ridiculous looking car. But my God, is it, is it striking? Yeah, I don't know anyone who actually bought one, especially when you had to pay 1.1 million I know, quid. I mental. Uh, but, you know, it is, it is, I guess, it's Aston's first hypercar. What I like about it, so it's full carbon fibre monocoque chassis. So there's a lot of good tech in there. 7.3 litre Cosworth V12 with a top speed of 220 miles an hour. But the interesting thing about the 177 is at no point in the time since 2010 when it was first launched have I ever wanted one. <laughs> No, well, obviously, you know, we Sorry. all want one. Um. <laughs> Last choice for me is, again, quite a personal choice. It's not going to be for everyone, but I really like the AMV8. It ran from 1972 to 1989. There were quite a few series within that, including the Oscar India and the Series 5, the last version. What I like about this car is that it was a Bond car. It was in the living daylights. It is a very well-proportioned, brutish, British car. It's a real CADS car. And I also quite like the fact that in that Bond film, it started out as a convertible and then <laughs> mysteriously changed into a hard top with some kind of mumbled Q branch description about why that happened. <laughs> Um, so I, and no one seemed to notice. There was no one at all who even vaguely noticed that the car literally changed in the in the film. Uh, same number plate all the way through. It was actually Victor Gauntlet's personal car. So he was the chairman of um, Aston Martin at the time and a top top geezer. I love the fact that it had loads of gadgets in it. So it did get a lot of screen time. But I think this again, this era of Aston Martin sums up what Aston Martin is all about. It is the archetypal British sports car, isn't it? So here we go then. A drum roll, please. This is the uh, the last Aston Martin on our list. Now, we are quite aware that there are a number of Aston Martins, prominent ones, which haven't featured yet, and yet we have only one slot to go. I can actually hear people screaming at their phones <laughs> and televisions at the moment. They're shouting, <laughs> why haven't you picked this car? This yeah. is the most... Here. And I think... That, and, and so I have to bring it up. Jason, what is the last one? What is our last favourite Aston Martin? This is the DB5. Of course, it had to be. It had to be. I mean, you've got to finish with the best, right? Finish with the big gun. We would have been strung up, would have been hung and quartered if we didn't have this on there. <laughs> unless, we've, unless, of course, we were trying to be deliberately controversial. Uh, which which we're, we're never controversial, are we? I don't think so. So the DB5. The DB5 became famous because of James Bond. It had all of the gadgets, it had the number plates that switched, it had the machine guns that came out of the side lights, it had the ejector seat, and more importantly, it also featured in the Cannonball Run. <laughs> of course, right? more importantly, yeah. Much more importantly, it featured in the Cannonball Run. There is a, the picture, when Sean Connery sadly passed away last year, the picture that was circulated the most was him leaning up against the DB5. And that, it says everything you need to know about this car. I'm sure it's a horror to drive, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't care about that. This is Aston Martin to a T. Yeah, I mean, really, what's incredible, it's only made for four years, 62 to 66. 4-litre twin cam straight six, claimed 282 brake horsepower. Even Aston Martin put the word claimed in their official documentation because <laughs> they knew they knew it was a load of old bobbins. <laughs> claimed 150 miles an hour. Again, bobbins. Yeah, this is just not happening. Yeah. And I just think there is no finer looking car. You know, get it in silver birch, the classic Bond colour just it's just so pretty and interestingly my nephew 
Marlow, he always wanted me to buy one of these cars and I never did. So sorry, Marlow, sorry. <laughs> the, probably the reason is, is because you love looking at them, but to drive them, perhaps not so much. So there you go, guys, that's it. That's our, that's our favorite 10 Aston Martins. <laughs> I hope it was worth the wait, all those people that voted for us to do it. We obviously should go through some honourable mentions, and let's face it, there are quite a few. Um, the Vulcan, which of course is that Ooh. totally bonkers looking, bonkers. you know, you cannot take it anywhere. Yeah. It's got one millimetre of ground clearance. And I'm not quite sure what you even do with a Vulcan. I'm not sure if you can track it really because of the noises. And I'm not sure, well, I definitely don't think you can drive it on the road. We've got the uh, the Vantage Zagato, which was the one that Rowan Atkinson always loved. Very short wheelbase, lots of bulges, very distinctive. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for that one. DB7 GT, so the last iteration of the DB7. The DB7 obviously pretty much the car that saved Aston Martin. DB9, the V12 V600, the V12 Vantage platform that then was pepped up a bit and they drilled some holes in the bonnet and then they decided to charge a million quid for it. <laughs> the Aston Martin Lagonda. Yes, now this is a sore point actually because this went in and out and in and out and in and out of this list so many times i can tell you and actually i may even slot it in before it goes live well, because yeah because i am like I you, you i'm obsessed i am obsessed with it i'm weirdly obsessed by it my god what a stunning weird crazy outlandish car that thing is whenever you see them you've got to just stop and stare at them they've got a bonnet which feels like it's 40 feet long and the thing i love most of all is the cockpit because you've yes. got this it's just like 70s sci-fi it's like being in 2001 a space odyssey we we can have 11 can't we we can be like spinal tap we can just turn it up to 11 we're the car guys yeah let's do that let's turn it up to 11. So straight in at number 11 is the Aston Martin Lagonda. And of course, I suppose we really ought to mention the thing that everybody wants us to talk about, um, which is the Valkyrie. Yeah, well, that's, an, that's a good point because really everyone would have gone, how come the Valkyrie is not in there? And the Valkyrie should really be in there, but none of them have been delivered yet. And they sort of feel like a sort of mythical beast at the moment, like a unicorn or a minotaur. Our list was very much ones that either had a personal stories or that we had experience of, and we haven't got any experience of the Valkyrie, but uh, let there be no man that can question the fact that the Valkyrie really, no doubt, will be one of the greatest Aston Martins ever made. I would absolutely want one, no chance of that, but fortunately, we know a man who is getting Who one. has. Hmm. Yes. Thanks for watching this episode on our favourite 10 Aston Martins. We really hope you liked it. We hope we've got some thought provoking sections in there. Don't forget to subscribe, leave comments, ding that notification bell for when we have another episode uploaded. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and our website. There'll be another Car Guys episode along next week. Yeah.